So uh, we discussed why we need uh, self-supervision, what are the drawbacks of supervised learning, and this uh, this slide summarizes it all. This is a slide from Professor Zizerman, and it's really good slide for overview of the self-supervised learning. So he says that you know uh, there are obviously expense of producing new data set every time for each new task, and there would be many domains and many applications. Say for example, medical data, where it's very hard to obtain annotated data because we need experts and even uh, without experts, the data collecting data, it's, it's really tough. And obviously the untapped availability, availability of vast numbers of unlabeled images or videos. For example, Facebook has 1 billion images uploaded per day and YouTube has 300 hours of video uploaded per minute. And also how we humans or the infant learn is not by, you know, through strong supervision, but just by observing and learning from the data itself. So what is self-supervision? So it's a form of unsupervised learning where the data provides the supervision. So instead of creating any external supervisory signals in form of labels, we'll, we'll take some information from the data itself as supervision. And that's why it's called self-supervision or self-supervised learning. In general, this, uh, he says, withhold some part of the data and the task and task the network with predicting it. So basically you'll be defining a proxy loss and uh, with, while solving that proxy loss, it will the model will be able to learn the representation, for example, the semantic, semantic representation in case of images. So let's understand it with a few more illustrations and examples. So, <clears throat> so as I said already, the goal of self-supervised learning is to not use labeled data, but just use unlabeled data in order to learn good representation. Okay, that's the goal of self-supervised learning and how it achieves it. So let's see the example here. So suppose let's say some data is provided to you and you don't know what data it is and your task is to recognize animals. And as of now, you have not, if it was supervised learning, you'd have labeled it say horse or zebra, but as of now you don't know anything and say it has animal X and animal Y, which you don't know anything about it. So how will you carry uh, self-supervised learning in this context? So let's take the example. Again, the goal is to learn good representation without using any labels. So in order to do that, step one would be to design a proxy task. So we will not be using uh, actual labels. We will design our own task, which will create a self-supervisory labels. So one simple task, which was presented in this paper, Unsupervised Representation Learning by Cipros Gidaris, is suppose this is your data and irrespective of what is there, you simply rotate it. Say you take one rotation of 90 degree, another 180 degree, take another sample, again rotate it. And now this becomes your pretext task. Now your task becomes to predict the degree of rotation of the image irrespective of the content. So here there was no F manual effort required to label it. You can just write a program to just rotate the image and it, you, you, you don't need any expert to sit down and label all this. So now your task becomes to predict the degree of rotation. And what happens when this step two, once you have designed your proxy task, step two is to train uh, the network on this proxy, proxy task of predicting the rotation and in the quest of you know predicting the rotation this model is able to learn good representation or features from the image because in order to predict how much degree it's rotated somehow it has to look into the image and understand if horse's leg is down zero degree if it's on the left it's 90 degree so in order to do that it learns good features from the data and these good features or the uh, good learned representation then can be transferred for our actual task. So our actual task we can do on the main task, which was our animal classifier, and that we can achieve with very few label data because we have already learned very good representation from this uh, self-supervised learning stage. And with this, uh, we'll be able to do this animal category classifier with a very few label data. And a good representation is achieved with this task. So I hope uh, this makes sense. So basically, as you see now, there are two tasks in the self-supervised learning stage. One is the pretext task, which is to learn representation from the unlabeled data by defining a task such that it uses some information from the data itself. And another is the downstream, downstream task or the main task where you actually use the labels. But here, uh, the amount of labeled data required will be very less because you already have learned good representation from your uh, previous self-supervisory stage. Okay, now it's not necessary that you always have to design a pretext task. So this paper which came out in uh, early March 2020, 
so this is called uh, uh, contrastive learning where it, it's kind of a matrix learning where you need not design any pretext task you take a image and you take some random augmentation of it for example this dog is done random cropping and the goal of the network is to predict that the features of this random crop are uh, equal or not so if the random crop are coming from the same image and it could be any augmentation crop is an example here then it should attract those features I means the distance between those features should be less and if the uh, crops for example this leg and this leg is coming then they are from different image then they should repel it if you can see the animation once again it will totally make sense to you so we are repelling the uh, augmented image from different uh, different images so in this way it learns the representation about the data it learns the features about the data so this is one way this is another way of you know doing self supervised learning so uh, in any of the stages uh, you can uh, to generalize it you can divide it in two sections stage 1 is learning representation from unlabeled data so you will be given unlabeled data now you either you can design your pretext task like rotation colorization or you use some kind of contrastive learning like sim clr and you learn a good representation now once you have learned this good representation you transfer this learning for your main downstream task okay where you perform your main task and this can be this is done with uh, in unsupervised way or self supervised way and this is done in supervised way but again this will require much lesser labeled data so uh, this is your you know this image sums everything of the self supervised learning now how will you evaluate the self supervised learning trained model how will you evaluate it has learned good representation so one idea is to use say knn so in the feature space you query uh, input image and you ask to retrieve similar images now this is one pretext task called relative uh, positioning where uh, by doing this self supervision task you can see the model was learned in such a good way that it was able to get similar features and this is random initialization where you know the random patches are being extracted and this is obviously image net pre trained so image net uh, all uh, by default it learns a good you know good representation so this way you can evaluate by visually that whether your learned representations are good or not another way to do that is to use a classifier so people in literature they use linear classifier logistic regression or multi layer perceptron so whatever representation has been learned from here you pass it through a logistic regression and class and perform the actual task to see whether it's doing good or not and if the representations are good enough then it will be performing good but mainly uh, although people have tried both uh, non linear and linear evaluation evaluation logistic regression tends to be used mostly and the idea is since linear classifier heavily rely on the quality of the representation since the discriminating power is low their performance can be translate translated to the performance of learned representation so if because logistic regression is very simple model only if the representation are good the logistic regression will be able to perform good so if your logistic regression is able to perform good on this learned representation it means that your learned representation is good enough so people basically use uh, logistic regression to evaluate their self supervised learning models so this is a overview you know of all the process and the evaluation and there are so many self supervised learning already implemented in the literature uh, from the text from the images from the videos from the videos with sound and which we'll be discussing in the next video uh, but i will also provide you link which already talks about all this and gives a good uh, introduction to it but the take away from this introductory video is that we can use self supervised learning for pre training Uh, with pretext task or some matrix learning task like sim clr either when you have unlabeled data or you can also use it when you have labeled data just uh, assume that you don't know the labels and you can use it and then use this learned representation to initialize your model for the downstream task and it may happen that for your task you may need to define your own pretext task uh, which you can do as per your task okay so this is the major takeaway um so uh, this is a slide from professor yan lakun during his talk uh, at e fl and this is a really beautiful talk you can uh, listen to it to get an introductory about self supervised learning so he compares the different kinds of learning through a cake and it's really interesting analogy where he compares the cake with the unsupervised or the self supervised learning where we learn from unlabeled data he compares the icing on the cake to be the supervised learning and he compares the cherry with the reinforcement learning so as you can say you know uh, the cake is the largest portion and because unlabeled data is really huge 
you know we can harness all those informations as well but further i think uh, you can go and watch his lecture for the analogy but yeah that's a really good uh, analogy and this slide is taken from uh, this link here so uh, the resources that you can follow is uh, this uh, this lecture from Jan Lacun. It's really good lecture. Another lecture from Alexi Efros. This is also a really beautiful lecture. So these two lecture really got me started with this self-supervised learning. Before that, I didn't know about it. And then this slide from Professor Zizeman, that's also a good introductory uh, what different self-supervision tasks. And this blog from Lilian Wang, uh, it is also a very uh, extensive blog about all the tasks there. So I'd request uh, to follow, go all go and look in all this link to uh, get more knowledge about it and yeah and in the next uh, next video we'll be discussing about the different uh, self-supervised learning strategies different pretext tasks that has already been implemented in the literature and how effective they are on um, other computer vision tasks like object detection or even for the nlp as well so yeah till then keep learning and keep exploring neurons bye and stay healthy stay safe